What's up everybody, welcome to the Amateur Coder channel. So today we're gonna be building our to-do app and we're gonna start with the very simple and easy to build login and sign up screen. And it's gonna be fully functional with Firebase as well. So before we start, I wanted to give two updates. One, I created a Discord channel, so it's gonna be in the description, feel free to join. And two, next week my birthday's on Thursday. And what I wanna do for that is to live stream every single day of that week. So we're gonna try that and see how it works. The live streams will start at 5 p.m. CST time. So I know that's pretty late or pretty early for some other place in the world, but we'll see how it goes. Hopefully it'll be fun. So, okay, let's get into the code. Here I have a very basic app with nothing, no get implemented at all. So we have the main that leads you right into the login screen. Login screen just has two text form fields with a text setting controller up here and two buttons that don't do anything. Sign up screen looks almost identical two text form fields and then sign up button that doesn't do anything. Then we don't have any services, we don't have any utils, we don't have any widgets. We don't have any controllers or anything else. Those are the only four files we have. So first things first, make sure you add the packages you'll need. So we'll need get Firebase auth and Cloud Store. For this video, we're not gonna use Cloud Firestore, but we will use the next one, so might as well add it. In the main, let's change this to get material app. And then in the login screen for sign up, let's do get dot two. So now the sign up button will take us to the sign up screen. Very simple. So the first thing we need to do is set up an auth controller. That's going to be the main part of this whole video. It's going to be driving everything that has to do with the login part of this. So here we create an auth controller and then we need to extend get X controller. In this, we're going to have two things that we're tracking. So we're going to have our auth state that we're tracking. And then also our Firebase user. And the thing about our Firebase user, we want it to be observable. So you would do that by doing this. And then you can initialize the observable object like that. So now this user right now is observable. So you notice these are both private variables. So we need something for the rest of the app to access. We're going to make an accessor called user and from that we will get firebase user dot value and then email this question mark period is for no safety this was this is a new feature in dart and what this does in this case if we have a no value it will actually return no and i'll put that so this next part is the most complex part of this video i think it's when we want the Firebase user instance to become observable. And we want to do that whenever the auth controller is started. So an observable is pretty much a stream. When do we want that stream to be outputting the correct data that, we're, that we need? We want to do it whenever this auth controller is initialized. So we're going to add the on init. And whenever this controller is initialized, we're going to take the Firebase user and we're going to bind the stream of auth on auth state changed. So whenever this instance is created and our authentication changes, our Firebase user will be updated as well. So we're binding the authentication stream that we get from Firebase to our actual user, which in return will update this user variable every single time it changes. All right, then we're gonna have three functions here. We're gonna have create user, login, sign out. For create user, we're gonna need an email string and a password string. And actually same exact thing for login. And then sign out doesn't need anything. You just sign out. You just sign out the user. So inside these functions, we want to make sure to try catch. This is what I've always iterated when you're using any futures. It's always smart to be using a try catch unless it's some very specific scenarios. So for creating a user, all I do is take the auth from the Firebase auth that we created, create user with email and password, pass the email, Pass the password. So whenever this happens, 
your on auth state change will get fired off. This Firebase user stream will get updated. And wherever you're retrieving the user, they'll get updated as well since it's observable. Also, we actually didn't make this a future yet. So there's no point of doing try catch. Make sure these are futures because you're calling the database. So for the login, it's going to be a very similar thing. I'm going to have auth dot sign in with email and password. And same thing, email, password, very simple. Sign out. Again, same thing, auth dot sign out. This one doesn't need anything passed. So that's it, we're done. Then functionality is done with the auth controller. But here I think is where the get package really shines. You can add a snack bar in our actual controller. We don't, because since we don't need a context, we don't need anything, this will work perfectly fine. For our message, we will just do e.message. You don't have to pass anything anywhere. And then snack position will do what I always like, snack position at the bottom. So here, in our actual controller, we're able to display a snack bar if something goes wrong. All the error handling is done in the actual auth controller. So that's it. The hard part of this video is done. Now you're going to see how easy it is to implement everything. And so for our login, instead of extending stateless widget, let's extend get widget with the auth controller. Once we have that, we can go to login, do controller dot login. We have our email controller dot text and our password controller dot text. So this doesn't work just yet. You'll see if we click login, we'll have an error pop up. We can read this error and it says auth controller not found. That's because we don't initialize it anywhere. So now thinking about it logically, when do we want the authentication to be initialized when we have an application? The whole time, right? So we want to initialize it right when the app starts. There's actually a really handy way to do this. We can create a binding. So binding will have auth binding. And so we have a class called auth binding extends bindings. You'll see we'll have a little error here. That's because we need to override one function called dependencies. And in here we do get dot lazy put auth controller. So what this does is wherever we bind this to, it will lazily add our auth controller to RAM whenever we need to use it. And where do we, what do we want to bind it to? We want to bind it to the actual app starting. We can have an initial binding here of auth binding. So now, whenever we start the app, this binding will get fired up and we will lazily load our auth controller into the application to be used whenever we first need to use it. So there we go. Our binding fired off our auth controller is working and we know that because if we click login you'll see auth controller instance created and initialized we have a snack bar that pops up saying the password is invalid or the user does not have a password so there we go it looks like it's working we have to do a similar thing and sign up so instead of extending stateless widget we're going to extend get widget with an auth controller and for sign up, we're going to do controller dot create user with email controller dot text and password controller dot text. So now we can go to the sign up screen. We can put email. Hey, sign up. Password must be at least six characters or more. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sign up. Email address is badly formatted. At Gmail. Sign up. Email address still badly formatted. At gmail.com. Sign up. And we see nothing because it worked. I can prove to you that it worked. 
because you can go to Firebase and you'll see hey at gmail.com. Also, if this didn't work, make sure you actually have an app with Firebase for this project. I didn't go through that because I have other videos going through it. So now if we go back to the login screen, so notice our auth control gets deleted from memory whenever we left the signup screen, even though we need to use it here. So this is done because our whole app isn't wrapped in something that uses auth controller. These two are just separated. My way to fix this is by adding a root utility. So for the home, we'll just send it to the root. And here we'll have a file called root.dart. Inside here, we'll say class extends get widget auth controller. And this root widget will return this observable. So this observable will return based on the auth controller that it finds and whether there is a user registered. So if our auth controller finds a user, then we'll go to the home screen. If it doesn't, it'll go to the login screen. So in the case where we signed up a user, so now since we have this observable that observes the auth controller throughout our whole app, we can go to sign up. We won't have that situation anymore. So you see our auth controller gets created and initialized before the actual login screen or the sign up screen. So if we go to sign up and we create a hey3 at gmail.com and we do one, two, three, four, five, six click sign up and when we go back we'll be in the home screen so probably a cleaner method would be in the auth controller when you sign up you should do get dot off all and then root all right so the actual solution is since we're the observable gives out the home or login when we go to the sign up screen it adds it to the stack so we don't actually get that we don't actually see anything there, but we can easily do a get dot back and that will bring us back to the login screen, which should by then be updated to the home screen. So, hey, five at gmail.com. One, two, three, four, five, six. If we click sign up. Now it takes the home screen and everything's great again. And we can try the email. So, hey, five at gmail.com. We try one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Log in doesn't work one two three four five six log in takes us to the home screen so there we go that's a very simple implementation of a login sign up screen with get x you see there's not really much code everything's pretty simple here one thing i'd like to note is adding your text editing controller in your stateless widget might not be the way to do it because you'll lose this every time the widget gets rebuilt but in my case it doesn't really get rebuilt if I if anything changes I don't really care but if for you you need to keep that state then you should put this in your actual controller but other than that that's it hope you enjoyed if you have any questions or anything leave it in the comments this code will be on github links in the description like subscribe and share if you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching